Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to part two of Real Talk. Today my program has been about foster carers and the need for more and more people to become foster carers, particularly from the Muslim community. As we know from the past, we've done this program on a number of occasions, that we have over 4,000 children in the care system from the Muslim community. And every one of them would like to get a Muslim foster parent to look after them, to care for them, to give them and show them love that they may not have received in their families. Children become a part of the care system for all sorts of different reasons. Sometimes parents have passed away. Sometimes marriage and relationships have broken down. Sometimes there are other issues as well. And there is a desperate need for foster carers generally. We know that there's more than 50,000 children in the care system in the United Kingdom as it is. And local authorities are struggling all over the country to find foster carers for all children, not just Muslim children. But obviously, we as a Muslim community uh, have a particular responsibility to look after our own f children who may be orphaned, who may be you know, in a foster care situation or in a care scenario. Because they are losing their faith, they're losing their culture. And in order to protect the faith and the culture, the faith more so than anything else, it's important that Muslim families provide that opportunity for them to be in a family environment where they can learn not just about the culture itself, but the faith of Islam itself as well, which is more important. So I have two guests with me, Sister Shaheen Khalid, who is a foster carer and has been for the last three years, and Kamran Mukhtar, who is the recruit manager for the Bradford Children and Family Trust. I've been talking to them, and they've been sharing their experience and their knowledge with me. So, I mean, Sister Shaheen, coming back to you, let me start with you. You've said you, you know, you, you've been fostering for three years and you've fostered a number of children. Uh, the siblings were the first one that you, you came. They're all siblings. They're all siblings, They're all, siblings. all of them. And uh, from the age of sort of zero to what was it, six is it? Um, because first, first of all, they came the four and six. Right. Second lot, they came the seven and eleven. Right. And uh, now they were in my care, the seven and nine. Right. So that's the age in the, is that the age range you like to have uh, preferred to have uh, um, as carers, or is it just I it happens to, them, to I said to them zero to eighteen, but prefer five to ten. But when the first uh, sibling came, they said four and six. Hmm. They asked me, and I said that's fine. Right. I'll take one. I said no, I'm not, I'm not gonna say no. And have they been from the Asian Muslim community, or are they from? Yeah, I've just explained before when uh, he was four when he came to mm -hmm. our care, and he was three quarter Muslim. Right. And the uh, girl was. Non-Muslim. Non-Muslim. So, um, and the second set? They were Chinese. All right. Oh wow. Yes. Mashallah. They were Chinese. All right. And uh, now the third one, who's at the moment, they were um, Slovakian. Slovakian. Yeah. So you had a range of different cultures. Different cultures, yeah. And ethnicities right. basically yes. come to you. Yeah. And how do you find that experience of getting? I mean, you know, for example, yeah. people like us, always been Asian. But obviously, you know, you probably have to cater to the needs of different children and the different foods, etc. And how did you find all that? I mean, I presume you had to go from making salon to salami and things like that, did you? Or lasagna? Uh, when their first children came, they eat anything. Right. They were eating. But they were, by, they were they eating spicy food as well? No, I, I make them um, yeah, non spicy. Exactly. Yeah. And they were eating rice. Chapais, um, English dinner, Chinese, mm -hmm. pastas, right. lasagna, anything they right. were eating. Second, when they came, they were Chinese, and I, I know how to cook Chinese, so I'm a really good cook. Oh, wow. So um, I made some, I bought other green ingredients and I, I cooked for them. But once, my, I've got grandchildren, 14, he came to stay, mm -hmm. and the, the foster child, seeing this, the, um, curry of the aloo gobi. Oh, right. he, he said, I'm going to eat that with chapai. I said, really? He says, yeah. I said, spice is doesn't matter. He said. Oh, right. And I said, okay, I'll make the chapai then. Mm. I need two chapai with them. Oh, mashallah, very good. And he looked at the uh, 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 curry. Then it's maybe curry for meat or chicken or uh, whatever the curry. So you, you actually, you are introducing them to a different, to a different culture, different culture. Yeah. As, as well as you being, into being introduced to a different culture. And, and he, he says, I like this, I'll eat this. Right. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. And when they taste our food, they like it. Even then now, 
when the girl, little girl, they didn't eat nothing. I think they were not um, look after well. So slowly, slowly, she eat rice These now. These are the Slovakian yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. They was eat, she was eating rice now, right. um, eating chapati and um, chicken without uh, chili in it. And uh, that day she ate paratha right. with the um, fried egg. Oh, and the child who's a special needs, he eating um, paratha as well. Is very specific this food. So you have a special, you saw a special needs child as well. I have a special needs child. Now moment. that in itself must be a, a challenge for you. Very challenging, yeah. Very How do you cope with all that? Uh, my own two granddaughters are the same. Acha. Um, a problem. Right. Yeah. Illness, uh, autism, severe right. autism. So I had experience. So you've with experience them. of that. Yes. Yeah. When they were young, and I took after them, and uh, when he came, I have a lot of. Uh, so you had a little bit of experience, experience of knowledge. In, in right. about that. And obviously, you must find all this very rewarding. Alhamdulillah. Because you're, you're saying you still want to continue. But how does your husband support in all this? Because he, you know, the, normally they say behind every man there's a woman. It seems like in this case, behind every woman is, is a man there yeah. helping you, I presume. He supports me all the way. Right. Mm, whether the children have having a bath, mm -hmm. or if I'm not, uh, can't pick them from school. Um, I can't give them a snack time or going out, and he was there. Right. E everything, we do it together basically. Mm -hmm. When he was home, he's not working, he was with me working, helping me. So. Right. And your other, your, your natural children, you were saying, they've been a source of strength as well for you. Yeah, definitely. They, they are helping me because whenever we need to go out, both of us, our family gathering or family, so somebody passed away, maybe we have to right. be there. I'm um, one of the children to look after. They come here to my house and they stay with kids. All right, subhanAllah. They, they turn so by turn, they'll come. They, inshallah, they'll be getting a lot of reward as well. Inshallah. 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 And the day of Qiyamah, they'll be getting yeah. equal reward as well. So, you know, so, I mean, uh, Kamran coming back, you know, so Shaheen, for example, put her name forward to say, I will become a foster carer. And then, you know, you, she went through all that process of getting approved. And as I said, you said four to five months sometimes. In her case, it took six months. And you go through all the checks and balances to try and make sure that you know she is suitable to become a foster carer. But if there is a need for some training or support, what sort of sort of elements of support have you, as an organisation, organisation, got in place to people to help support people like Shaheen? So go going back to Shaheen and the the children she had with with special needs. There is specific training we can provide for the child that's in your care. So each child is different, so they yep. may have different needs. You may not have them skills for that child, so we'd provide that specific training for that child. But as a foster carer, there is generic training that you need to do each uh, when you become a foster carer. The minimum is 35 hours a year that you need to do compulsory training. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's ongoing training, so we do face-to-face -face training, we do online training, there's a lot of workshops, uh, there's support groups that uh, meet every month where you go to meet other foster carers like my, uh, who are working with Bradford Fostering, uh, where there'll be some specific training uh, when you go to that support group. Uh, there's a lot of events that we do. We do the Eid party, we do the Halloween party. There's a lot of other enrichment activities we do to keep foster carers involved, talking to other foster carers, putting in touch with other foster carers to speak to them. Uh, and the foster children getting to meet other foster children as well. Mm. Obviously, we've been focusing on Shaheen as a foster carer, but you, you just told, you know, told me earlier that you're a foster carer yourself as well. I am, yes. So you have your own family? I do. I have uh, three adult children of my own. Oh, uh, sure. I say adult, they've done their degrees. The youngest is still at uni. Uh, right. But yeah, three children of my own. I've been a foster carer for, as I said, over six years. Right. We've had approximately 40 children stay with me. 40? Yes. I, oh my God. I, and that nicely brings me on to the different type of fostering that we do provide. So we do offer part-time fostering uh, where you can just give up a weekend a month to look after a child. Mm -hmm. uh, we do short-term fostering or long-term fostering. Right. Uh, at the moment, I have two white British children who live with me. Right. Uh, and uh, going back to the food, I'm very hungry now, Shaheen. Keep talking about food. <laughs> uh, 
So the, the children who are with me eat what I eat. So they'll eat a curry every night with me and they prefer to eat a curry. Even if I'm ordering out, they'll say we want a curry. Uh, so they prefer to eat Asian food. Uh, they fast with us, they do eat with what about us. There was the, obviously there was that famous case in London a few years ago where a child was not a non-Muslim. Yeah. And you know, they sort of wanted non-halal meat. Yeah. Now, have you had any of you had that issue with you, with your experiences? I'm going to say on, on, on that basis, as a foster carer, I've never had a child say to me, Cameron, I'm going to die if I don't get a bacon butter. Mm. Uh, but if I was in that situation, I wouldn't cook it, but I'd take him to a cafe to go eat it. Right, okay. So it wouldn't affect me, it wouldn't affect my religion. I am a practicing Muslim, so it wouldn't affect me. Uh, but I've never had that. As I said, I've had 40 children stay with me. Which only five have been Muslim children. Right. Uh, and nobody's ever said to me that they want to eat. What are the age ranges that you... So I've had, I've had children from 0 up to 16. Right. Uh, so I've and had newborns. Teenagers newborn. are notoriously fickle at times. How have you found? I mean, she's not had teenagers so far. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, but you've had teenagers. Huh? But I've had three teenagers of my own, so I know how to deal with teenagers. Right. Uh, and again, they, they, I've never had any issues or concerns. Mm. Like I said, we set rules and boundaries, and there's house rules, and the children tend to follow them. Right. I mean, I, well, well, I used to be a, an assistant director in local government uh, for a very long time, and one of my councillors who I used to work closely with in you know he, they has over the years fostered 280 children right um, the, I mean I was just amazed by them and they they said that you know sometimes you get some real challenges there's no doubt about it because you know children are children and from different cultures and different backgrounds and different upbringings some come from abused families etc so they've seen life is very different the way a family sort of structure and behaves and you know, that in itself is quite a challenge for people who have, like, so not to 18, for example, 16. You know, teenagers can bring their own challenges. Like you're saying, you've not really had that because of your... But, you know, culturally, there may be some things that, you know, some people may do in terms of the clothes they wear, etc. That might be something that, as a Muslim family, you may not be comfortable with. So how would you deal with that? But again, when, when the, the children are placed with me, they are my children mm -hmm. while they're with me, and I treat them as I would my own children. Uh, yes, I, I wouldn't have them stood on street corners, as I wouldn't have my own children stood on street corners. Uh, so they would dress appropriately and age appropriately. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there are concerns teenagers do, uh, like any child, they will try to push boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's about having them uh, conversations with them to steer them back where we need to have them. So behind you, like they say, there's a, there's a woman. So you're obviously your wife. It, it, I'm going to say it's my wife, my whole family. Uh, it's not just me or my wife who foster. It's my whole family, including my brothers, my sisters. All right. They're all involved. Uh, my father's heavily involved. He keeps a, a tab on, on what the foster children are doing, how they, how, if I'm doing my job correctly, looking after them. All right. SubhanAllah. May Allah give the whole of the family <laughs> the highest reward. Because as I say, the Prophet also made a special plea and actually made an effort to say, Anybody who looks after an orphan child, you know, it will going to be stand next to me, side by side on the day of Qiyamah. So maybe, you know, I'm sure you will be in that line, both of you uh, in that line as well. Now, in terms of support for the families, obviously, you know, you've got your kids, you're all married, they've all gone, you've got grandkids, there's you and your husband, and obviously there's, you know, we're living in what we call now sort of challenging times financially. So how do you cope? I know there's, there's uh, uh, fees or allowances given to foster parents at the moment. And I know a lot of people do it not for the money. They do it because, like I'm sure that Shaheen and her family, because they want to give love and care to children who don't have their own families. But what are the allowances that people can actually receive by becoming foster carers? So that you, you, uh, when you become a foster carer, you are given a fee and allowance. The fee is determined on your level of skills right. and what training you've got or what skills you've got of working with children. The allowance is the money that we pay for the weekly cost of the child. So that would be the extra gas that's being used in your home, the extra food you need to buy, the clothes that you need to buy them. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So it vary. the Charles is fixed, your fee will change based on your level of skill uh, and again the number of children you have in placement with yourself. Does that depend on the age of the child as well? It is, the allowance is dependent on the age allowance, the younger childs are not going to have that much cost. Uh, but the average, I would say, for a child between no, uh, sorry, five and ten is about £175 a week. That's the, that's the allowance that the child would get. And the fee is a similar, uh, it's about £175. So, so the, is there two payments? That There's two payments, well, I yes. I, I didn't realise that. So the fee is for the foster carer. Uh, right. I don't like to say that, but it's their wage for being a foster carer. Right. And then they get an allowance on top of that to cover the day-to-day -day costs of, of that child. On top of that, I know Shaheen said she had to incur some extra costs when she was going through the assessment. We do actually pay to for the bed. That's the adaptation of the house. Adaptations if, if we need to, or if there's any bed wardrobes mm -hmm. that they need to, in order to become a foster carer, uh, Braffer Fostering do cover that cost as well. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we do give additional allowances for birthday gifts, uh, Eid present, uh, holiday allowance, uh, mm -hmm. there's extra payments that we do provide uh, for, for the children and for the mm -hmm. carers. Uh, so there is a quite a substantial amount of sub financial support as well for people who want to become foster carers. Like you say, if they, you know, the house needs to be readapted, for example. So there's, there's support for that as well. There is. Uh, and bedroom furniture and things like that as well? Yes, so we will provide yeah. uh, the cost of the bedroom furniture. Mm -hmm. And even when a child comes to you on the first night, they may not have a lot of belongings with them. Mm -hmm. So we would give you a lump sum to go buy them them belongings because uh, they may come with no clothes whatsoever. Right, right. So they'll need that emergency payment to cover their, their night clothes, their toothbrush, uh, whatever they need on mm -hmm. that emergency, they would, they, we would provide that Definitely. as well. Right. And obviously, I know I'm not asking whether you made use of all that, but you said, you know, when you had to do a, a banister and a window and all that, that sort of stuff. That was the, that's a, for safety for children. Yeah. But when they came, I knew I'm going to be hosting, I need the two beds and a, a furniture and anything I already bought because I never thought when they're going to give me money, I'm going to buy them. Yeah, I never exactly. thought that. But you already had it, sleep, yeah. I, I, bought, I bought the single beds for them, two of them. So I, I, I put them in the bedroom. And I didn't even know that I can get allowance for this mm -hmm. or that. But because I wanted to do that, and when you do for your own children, um, bedroom done for the children coming, you, you do it. You everything. want to treat them just like treat you say, them, yeah. just like as if but everything new and everything for them. And mm -hmm. when they came in, they were surprised so for them. Obviously, you, you've had children for two years at a time. You must become attached to them. Very. Don't ask, don't ask for that. <laughs> Obviously it's be very. That's the very um, delicate part. When they, mm. they, when you, when they leave in, they make you. Yeah, I'm broken basically. I'm sure you must be. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. And the family Heart must broken. be. They, they probably miss you as well because I know, in the past, people have said to me, that you know, or they've phoned into the program and said, we started, we brought, we brought this child into our family, and then we actually adop adopted them. So yeah. you know, from becoming becoming a foster carer. They actually adopted that, that child as well. Do you feel like that sometimes? Um, I don't want to adopt them because I'm 60 years old. Right. And how much time I've got to look after them, six and five, very young, four yes. years, very young there. Mm. They grow up and I maybe not fulfill their duties. So right. I don't want to be greedy and keep them. <laughs> maybe there's somebody else give them a better well, life. So if you're looking 60, my goodness. <laughs> Obviously, Allah has really blessed you, Thank you very well. But you know, uh, and may Allah give you even more strength. Thank you. I mean, so somebody watching this program in the Bradford area, I mean, this program is watched in Pakistan as well. But somebody now watching the, pro pro the, the program in Bradford area, if they want, and hopefully they're inspired by your, your your stories and what you've said, what would they want? What should they do to try and get in touch with your service? <clears throat> I know you mentioned the. The, 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 the text number, which is 88802, Bradford 88802. You have a website, you have a phone number, uh, you, and you, you attend events, etc. So, <clears throat> so yes, so the, the easiest option is, uh, as I said, is just text Bradford to 88802, right. uh, and I will give you a call back tomorrow morning. Or you can go on our website and book a, an appointment with myself when it's more convenient for you. Mm. Um, or just, uh, or just visit the website. It's got all the information you need on there, so it'll tell you what fosterings, uh, what 
what's involved in fostering. It'll tell you the fees and allowances that you mm -hmm. can get paid as a foster carer. It's got some stories on there about children who are fostered. It's got some stories on there from foster carers as well that is, oh, is worth reading. Uh, so the, the main point of contact would be the website or uh, texting the word Bradford to 88802. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, don't be put off, uh, even if it's just to have a chat. It may not be right for you at this moment in time, but any questions you have, uh, just give us a call. Uh, like I say, text Bradford 88802, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have, or just provide you with that extra information. Uh, it does take time for the stars to align for you to become a foster carer. It might not be right for you now, but it may be right for you in six months' time. But please have that conversation with us uh, because we are struggling uh, to find f families to look after children. Mm. Okay. Shaheen, before we go on, we end the program, any last minute quick words you want to say to people who may be thinking about becoming foster carers? Uh, I'm just going to say to all the families who can, who who had a bedroom and spare bedroom and, and they can come for foster. Even one child makes a difference in their lives. Come forward and do a good thing for Thank you. you. So yeah, improve, then. not only improve your own life, but improve the life of a child, child as well. As well yeah. right? And yeah. there are many, many people, as Shane said out there, particularly young children who are definitely, definitely looking for a loving, caring home. And, uh, uh, and I, I must say, I had a lot of respect for Shaheen when she first, we first started, but when she mentioned that she has an SEN child, a child with a special need, that in itself is a huge sacrifice uh, for anyone. And any parent who has a child with a special need, particularly you know, if you have a child with autism, for example, the different ADHD, uh, attention deficit, we know how challenging that is as well for parents. So for her, it must be equally even more challenging at this age to do what she's doing, but may Allah give her the highest reward, not just in this world, but all the foster carers, not just her, including Kamran and his family, for the work that they do, the children that they look after, and the providing with them a loving, caring family home. And particularly for if they're Muslim children, as Shaheen has said, giving them that little bit of culture and encouragement to stay within the deen of Islam and unless Muslim parents, Muslim foster parents do that, we're going to lose our children to other faiths, no faiths whatsoever. So it's important that everyone thinks about this. And if you have the capacity, then please consider becoming a foster carer, not just in Bradford, but throughout the country. I hope you enjoy the program. Take care, inshallah, I'll see you next week. In the meantime, may Allah protect you and keep you safe and well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.